Now, outside of the studio, out there in the street, we're certainly facing some hot weather here in France. But is the country ready to face the risk of wildfires this summer? The fire season started very early on in this year. And in the midst of the current drought and upcoming heat waves, firefighters are indeed worried. The beginning of the harvest season is also a critical time. And to talk more about it is uh, Julia Seeger. Hello, Julia. Hello. Um, high temperatures and drought episodes contribute to increasing the risk of wildfires. So what is the current situation here in France? Well, in France, you already have several departments that uh, have implemented water usage restrictions. You're going to see it in a, on this color, uh, uh, color coded map. The uh, uh, so you have those uh, those areas. You have gray areas that also indicate that uh, the, those departments are at risks. Now, of course, firefighters are going to closely monitor droughts uh, because, as the guest was just saying earlier, uh, it is an aggravating factor for uh, for fire. But also, there are other factors as well, like intensive urbanization and, of course, high temperatures. Now, firefighters actually follow a rule of thumb called the 30-30-30 rule. So that's when you have a humidity, humidity level, excuse me, in the air below 30 degrees, a temperature that is above 30 degrees Celsius, and uh, an average wind speed of about uh, 30 kilometers per hour. And if you have those three uh, criteria that are put together, and maybe we can take a look at those 30-30-30 uh, uh, rule. There you go. Uh, if you have those three criteria, well, this is when uh, it's considered to be extreme fire behavior potential. Now, firefighters pay very close attention to this rule, especially during harvest season, because they fear what we call harvest fires. And those are fires that are sparked by uh, friction that uh, that is is provoked by the harvest blades uh, on, on certain stones. And this has devastated fields in France, let's say, even last year, 2022, but also 2019. And 2019 was really a breaking point uh, where hundreds of hectares went up in smoke. And it was a wake-up call. And this is why in many regions now in France, they've actually created a new dynamic between farmers and firefighters. And of course, the worst case scenario is when you have uh, these fires, these crop fires, but also uh, forest fires at the same time. And other regions around the world, of course, have been affected by massive fires, such as Canada, um, where fires still to this day continue to burn. Exactly. Canada has been battling wild, wildfires for weeks now. And as you're going to see on this map, there are still many fires that are not controlled. We have these aerial uh, satellite pictures that can help us uh, estimate all the red regions are uh, fires that are still burning that firefighters cannot control. Uh, now, experts say that fires are indeed becoming less predictable. It's making it more increasingly challenging to understand the behavior of uh, fires. There's also no longer a specific season. You also have fires during winter, uh, which we had never seen, and this is actually due to climate change. But. Uh, and this can seem counterintuitive because we've never had so much technology to help us quell uh, this, this problem. But at the same time, it's important to say that it's still prevention, education, and uh, awareness that remains essential because nine fires out of ten are actually by human activity. And technology, of course, equally playing a very important part in fighting those fires. Especially, exactly. Well, first of all, you're going to have robotics, but here the problem is going to be to be able to find those material that can withstand high temperatures, of course. And here you have the example of Colossus, which is the robot that was used to fight uh, the uh, fire of Notre Dame. Uh, you also have, of course, you have to uh, be able to act on the ground really swiftly, but at the same time have an aerial perspective of what's happening to know how fast the fire is spreading. And here we're going to use satellite pictures, but also drones. And here I'm going to tell you about Photokite. So it's a drone that's attached to a cable and that's able to give in real time pictures. And so that's going to help firefighters understand indeed how it's spreading, but also with the thermal cameras that you're seeing here to detect if people uh, are still trapped in the flames. Uh, now, of course, you're also using AI like in every other uh, sector. And here you're, we're going to use machine learning, AI, and also what we call computer vision to recognize early detection of fires. Here I'm going to tell you about Pano AI. Uh, it's a startup in California. And they've put these cameras um, to be able to really uh, monitor wildlife. And that helps them understand and be able to detect very early on if a fire has started. Julia Seeger, thank you so much for that. Thank you.